folks, make sure you go to your government website, your local government website, and know your zone for whether you need to evacuate if you're a Floridian and where you're located within the coastal evacuation zone. I just happen to not be in one. They have all sorts of good information. They'll tell you about food. If you buy canned food, make sure you have a can opener. Always a good idea. They'll have nice lists like that. I'll include a link to this in the description of the video. If you have pets, make sure you bring pet food. Um, here's further information. This is uh, about food and water, and this is from FEMA. And one of the things they talk about, I, I talk later in the video about water, and I'll include a link to this. Make sure you know how to treat your water. If you're storing water in large containers, if you have a 55-gallon drum, a bathtub, whatever it may be, there is a proper way to treat and store the water. And you need to add 16 drops or 1 8th teaspoon of bleach per gallon of water. So what you ought to do right now is make sure you have some bleach for your hurricane preparedness kit. Make sure you know the volume of the containers in gallons, not cubic feet, but gallons. So if you're estimating the gallons of a bathtub and you're measuring in feet and inches and you're calculating cubic feet, make sure you know the conversion to gallons because you're going to get that wrong. One, have water. Have water in bottles and larger containers. Have water frozen in your refrigerator. That will keep your refrigerator cold when the power goes out. An added bonus if you have dry ice to keep your freezer and fridge cold. Have more water. So, my pool is salt water. I can pump the water out of my hot tub. I can lay a tarp in the hot tub and fill it from my garden hose. Now, I have a water issue because I have well water. If the power goes out, I have no pump, no electricity for the pump, and I have no water. Now again, if you have well water, you can lay a tarp in your jacuzzi tub or regular tub and fill it with water. The water will stay for days. I'm going to look it up and annotate below the video uh, how you need to treat the water. Per gallon of water you need to put a certain amount, so many drops of bleach in, and that'll keep it stable. Now, the water that I'm keeping in the tub, in the house, I can use for drinking. The water, the salt water in the pool, I can put in the tank of the tub, uh, tank of the toilet, I can fill the top of the tank, and I can use that to flush the toilet. So if you're worried about the water quality, you can get one life straw per person and that'll keep your water clean that you're gonna be drinking. Also, if you're gonna use water from the pool to fill the tank of your toilet, have a bucket for that, one for each toilet. So let's talk about food. I have canned food that I got at the supermarket and I watch the expiration date and before it expires I donate it to a local food pantry. Have dry food like pasta that you can boil in water, canned fruit, beans, um, all of those make for a good supply. Have you know just your core foods you know rice and, and pasta that kind of thing and sauce and have some treats. So if you're going to be without food, you know, supermarket food for a couple of days, make sure you have something that you can treat yourself with. My next thing is fuel. So have gasoline or diesel or propane or charcoal. So propane and charcoal for heating food and boiling water. Uh, gasoline, have your vehicles topped off. Uh, get a couple of gas cans as spares so you have fuel. Uh, if you do have a chainsaw, make sure it's gas-powered, not electric, and that you have fuel for, for it, whether it's 
Uh, a two-stroke engine, make sure you have the oil and mix and that you've tested the chainsaw beforehand. Power vaults. So have a power vault for your rechargeable devices. Have batteries for your flashlights and flashlights. I do not have a generator, uh, but I do have an inverter that I'll hook up to the car. And I got a, I think it was a 2000 watt inverter. I can run both refrigerators simultaneously. Both refrigerators only have to be run about three times a day. Maybe if you have electronics that have a UPS on it, like computers, like I do, turn them off. And you can use the power when you need it because you don't want it running all the time. Now, if you don't have a POTS line, which is a plain old telephone system, that works without power in the house. If you do have a POTS line and a cordless phone, that needs power. So beware, make sure you have one wired phone if you have that type of setup. For me, I have Vonage, and what that means is I have a big UPS on my modem, my router, my Vonage phone, and uh, you know the Vonage phone system or service uh, device, and my cordless phone is on a battery backup on a UPS which I will turn off and only turn on in case of emergency. And if you're counting on the internet for communication uh, during a storm like this, and uh, I am in Jupiter Farms, good luck to you. So the next part is communication. A hand crank radio uh, is excellent because you don't have to worry about batteries for it. I have one with a hand crank solar charger and... You can plug it in and charge it up like a power vault, and it does AM, FM, and NOAA weather emergency radio. Um, if you're a CB radio guy, a ham guy, it's always good to have something like that and a battery uh, to back it up. Uh, the other part is fire. So if you have fire, matches are always good. Kindling is good. Uh, magnesium and flint is good. If you've got charcoal, get a charcoal chimney. So now if, if we're talking like the plus super people, um, you're going to want a big bow saw or a chainsaw that's not electric and a tow rope. Uh, and just know how to use the tow rope. If you have a four-wheel drive vehicle, that's always very helpful. You know, four-wheel drive vehicle with a trailer hitch. And if you have a push bar, that, that's where you're going uh, to be more in the area of excelling. Now, I don't have an evacuation plan. I am not in a coastal evacuation zone. So that's one thing I don't have to worry about. The other thing you have to worry about is shutters. Now, I have those corrugated steel shutters. I was new to the home and didn't realize they're, all of the windows are numbered. And they're numbered in a counterclockwise rotation starting at the garage. And they're numbered, so it's number window one, and it say, it'll say panel one of three, two of three, three of three, that kind of thing. Make sure your panels are numbered. You can read the numbers. They're in order, so when you take them off the pile, you know what to do. And make sure the screws on the house are working. Now, you need to make sure that you don't do the wrong thing with the screws. Uh, the screws are typically of the sort where they have a very big flat blade or standard blade, and they have a cross for a Phillips. Now, you can use a standard number two Phillips bit in a screw gun, and you're likely going to strip it. So beware of that. If you do have an issue, you might want to pick up an impact driver, and I'll, I'll roll in a picture of that. And this way, you can get them up. Make sure you have a ladder to get the, uh, the panels up, and you should be well prepared for this. Uh, beware that candles in other sources of heat, which being that it's Florida, you're probably not going to look for heat, are the major causes of fire. So be careful for fire. And if you're one of my friends in South Florida, best of luck to you. And please write back to me if you have any additions to the list that I missed because I want you guys to be safe and prepared.
Hey folks, thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, visit flyingrich.com where all of my social media is aggregated, and visit patreon.com slash flyingrich. If you donate, I greatly appreciate it. Just one dollar a month from one person, or many one persons, would make a big difference and would help fund and finance a lot of what I've been doing. I've been doing YouTube for a number of years, I've been podcasting for a number of years, and blogging and posting, and I hope I provide helpful content to you, and if it's worth a dollar, I'd greatly appreciate that you donate a dollar a month. Right now, I have made zero money from all of my efforts online, that's blogging, posting uh, content on YouTube, and being a host on a uh, multiple podcast and I have gotten zero for it. And if you could find a way to donate one dollar a month, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will list you, and I will list you at the end of my videos as a Patreon sponsor for one dollar a month. 